These days, connected technologies are everywhere. And for a lot of us, they've become a big part of how we live. Connected tech is in our phones, our cars, our music. It's how we get food delivered. It's even in some shoes. But what about the bicycle? Bikes are evolving faster than ever. And some of that evolution is being driven by connected technology. Many riders have embraced this digital evolution and found it's unlocked a whole new world of capabilities and experiences. Others question if this new tech will just add a bunch of complexity to their bike and take away from the fun. But what if, instead of complicating your bike, connected tech could actually make it simpler so you can experience more freedom, more joy, more of what you ride for in the first place? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Bicycles being the simple, elegant machine, there have always been a space for innovation and what comes next. And so we start adding electronics and connected components onto the bike. It really just keeps opening up one door after another. There's been a lot of advancements, especially in the last 10 years, around what a cycling head unit really is. Now you're able to record all of these metrics about how your body is physically performing right on that ride, as well as where you're doing that ride, the type of terrain, the type of weather. And of course, power, heart rate, uh, the other sensors come on board. Power meters were really driven from high performance cyclists, but it came right over into everyday cyclists to understand more of what they're doing on the bike. And then, of course, the internet gets layered on where you get the Strava layer uh, of understanding how fast am I up this hill versus somebody else. And that really cracked it open. When Strava hit the scene, it added a whole new social element to riding, connecting cyclists by giving them access to their performance stats, encouragement, and healthy competition, all through an app. Strava is cool. It's it's like a fun way to um, keep in touch with people in terms of you know the comments and the kudos and people posting photos and things like that. It's really cool to be like, oh neat, I got a medal this time, which means I was doing better at something than I did last time. The stats, like the data, like I can see exactly like how much faster I'm riding. When I know I'm on a segment, I push a little harder. You go faster when you feel like somebody's watching you. Even though you're by yourself, you get that feeling that somebody's with you on the ride. I'd steal one of my friend's crayons and they'll be like, hey, you got my crayon. And then it becomes a bit of like a inside joke race. Strava helped pioneer the digital riding community. And the events they host are inspiring generations of riders to try things they never thought they could, like the Rafa Women's 100. Rafa Women's 100 has been a massive event that has built so much community around getting women out to ride all together on the same day. It's our biggest ride of the year every year as a single day event. We've been able to share those stories through a platform like Strava and get people excited to take on a challenge like that. And whether they rode by themselves or with a group of friends, they were all riding as one. So we've seen ways connected technology is helping track performance, bring riders together, and build community. But what happens when wireless connectivity is built into the actual components of the bike? We're in a world now where you can change the temperature of your house from an app. The Access ecosystem lets you have that same control and understanding over your bike. <laughs> we didn't want to just copy the way we shifted before. So we got rid of the cables entirely who went to a wireless shifting system. The role of access on the bike is really interesting because it really liberates the rider. It also liberates the components from the bicycle in a certain way because it's no longer limited to a cable. And it's really great to have a really simple shifting logic where right hand goes harder, left hand goes easier, just like an F1 car. For me, the way that SRAM shifting works is really natural because it is the same that every team has in their car. So left pedal is downshift and right is upshift. When I tried the SRAM, I was like, okay, this is like much more natural to me. So <laughs> it's, um, it's so simple. 
I want to care about the person I'm talking to, the place that I'm riding, the landscape that I'm being absorbed in. I don't want to care about the shifting. And that becomes more possible than it ever was if it's taken away from me in a way that just makes it disappear. Connected tech has made things like shifting simpler and more intuitive and even more reliable. The real power of a connected ecosystem, though, is how it lets you personalize your bike on a level never before possible. Without access, customization is, is purely a physical thing. Where are my brakes? How high is my stem? But with access, there's logic that's, that's part of the customization. How should things behave? How should they act? Being able to program different clicks to do different things, it's a whole new frontier that we're able to explore and figure out how we can aid in accessibility, in um, what's needed for different people. There's just a lot that we're able to do now that we couldn't have done before. You may have a rider with some form of adaptability need where they require, let's say for example, all the shifting on one side of the bike. They could be set up that way. Because of my, my hand situation, with the blip, I'm able to have three controls on the right hand side. Life changing for my riding. It, it's insane. So most cyclists, you can pedal and shift at the same time because you're using your legs. Well, if you're using your arms going forward, you can't do that with a wired system. So the wireless system allows me to pedal and shift at the same time and be very efficient what I'm doing. For a hand cyclist, it's, it's worth its weight in gold. Let's hear it, folks, for your new national champion. There's a clear benefit to combating ableism in cycling, and electronic shifting is 100% going to take us down that road where it makes it easier for more people to quite literally ride their bike. Being able to personalize your controls is a benefit to all riders. The next step is a bike that can adjust things in real time while you ride without having to push a button or even think about it. We caught up with John Cancellier to see what makes this level of intelligence possible. Brief version of flight attempt. Okay. So we've got a fork with a control module. We've got a rear shock that can talk wirelessly back and forth between the fork and the shock. And then we've got the pedal sensor down on the cranks and that's reading that rider input. It's reading the trail for you. It's reading your pedaling inputs and it's making decisions faster than you could to make sure that you have the best ride experience. Now that the components of your bike are talking to each other and making your riding experience better, what if these technologies could make your riding experience safer? This vision is what inspired the folks at Cannondale to create SmartSense, an intelligent system of integrated onboard lights and radar. When a car approaches from a rider's blind spot, SmartSense prompts the rider and driver to pay extra attention, helping to prevent both from being surprised and reacting unsafely. The thing with connected ecosystems is they open the floodgates to possibilities never before imagined because they provide a platform for both software and hardware innovation that anyone can build on. When the App Store first opened, there were 500 apps available. And now there's well over 2 million apps. And that just gives you a sense of, of sort of the scale that, that that has unleashed. It can be anyone from you know, established companies making apps to you know a kid that comes up with a good idea. Since I have some of these tools, I made myself a little garage door opener. So instead of shifting a front derailleur by pressing both buttons, it just opens my garage door. We're just really scratching the surface of what wireless technology can provide. TireWiz is a wheel sensor that makes suggestions on the optimal pressure based on terrain. It was used to finally end the debate on which tires are faster on the infamous cobbles of the Perry roubaix Now, any rider can know the right tire pressure for where they ride, and if they've got a leak. My tire pressure right now is 21.5 in the front, 25.7 in the back. Suspension is super interesting. You cannot describe what suspension should feel like. You have to experience it. Nobody knows how to set up a suspension bike. That's a really tough thing to do. Why don't we have something that does it for you? Shockwiz is a true game changer because it can observe the way the suspension is working on one person and help another person recreate that performance. 
The Axis Reverb Post is the most technologically advanced post in the world. Fully wireless from the handlebar to the seat post. But with that, it's just as easy to set up on a bike as a traditional non-dropper post. In a recent race, Vlad Daskalu broke his seat and was able to basically pull his bike in, pit it, get an entirely new seat post, and still maintain a podium spot. You could not do that with a standard dropper post. I had the chance like, to fight again for the podium, so it was amazing to have uh, <laughs> the wireless uh, seat dropper post on, on that race. Connected tech is clearly changing the way we ride. It's even changing what we mean by riding itself. Enter the smart indoor trainer. All right, you guys ready? Much like Strava digitized elements of cycling, you know, bringing the world together, you know, being able to compare, you know, segments and things with, with riders all around the world, Zwift does that for the whole ride experience. This gamification of indoor cycling has opened up like literally new worlds and new experiences and new communities. This winter, we were in Europe for cyclocross racing and stopped in London and I got to meet one of my Zwift friends in real life and ride together in real London, not Zwift London. So that was really amazing. Riding indoors, um, it used to be like punishing, you know? <laughs> You're staring at a wall and sweating profusely and, you know, all the motivation has to come from within, <laughs> which not everybody has. I will puke before I let B. Davies pass me. To be passed by a competitor in a virtual platform like Zwift is really a game changer. I never imagined that digital racing would launch my professional career. In 2018, I won the Zwift Academy Road Program and joined Canyon Stram Racing, a women's world tour team. It's a dream come true. The digital cycling community allowed me to reach the start line in the real world. To see these riders come out of seemingly nowhere who are now sponsored professional athletes because they were able to pedal hard on their trainer at home and now race in the women's professional peloton is staggering. Even from the first year, like all the women who were there, super strong athletes. And yes, they came from the digital platform, which I think was great because particularly if you're born outside of Europe, the pathways to get to the professional ranks is quite challenging. Imagine any other sport where you have a shot at going pro from your living room. Clearly, there's already a whole lot of digital innovation going on. And at the rate of technological change, which is literally exponential by nature, imagine in five years, or even two, where might that lead? The beauty of cycling is there's so many different ways to enjoy it. There's so many different ways to do it. There's so many different tools to make the most out of it. I'm just really excited about making everything simpler. It can tell you things when you need to be told. It can not bother you when you don't need to be bothered. It's very, very simple to install. And at the end of its life, it's instantly recyclable. Like those are, that's really where we wanna go uh, with bicycle technology. I wouldn't try to talk someone out of their love and joy for the tactile experience. But there's another kind of joy that when the technology is so intuitive that it disappears for us. And then there's room for the joy of just being the experience, just being in the place.